This video is made for adult collectors because bro is expecting a giant car. I got the land. This drift has been a really popular talking point in certain parts of the third party space these past couple months and weeks because it's this company's real first outing in the MPM 3P space and they're making this shatter that everybody, myself included, is really excited about. So there's a lot riding on this toy to get people excited for the next release because if this is good, then that means they'll probably make a banger shatter. And I can safely say that this drift is uh, mostly good. It's good enough to recommend getting, but it's also not without its drawbacks. This is Metagate's take on Drift, and this is the last night deco because I like that one more, and no, it does not turn into a Mercedes AMG GTR because that would mean re-engineering the entire toy, but it also does chopper mode, which wasn't in the last night, so like, this toy is just weird in that regard. But I don't care, the red Veyron makes me like the look of the car more than the blue one, because I don't actually like the look of the Veyron that much. I know I'm weird. Before I go any further though, this video is brought to you by T- <laughs> I am weird, I don't like the Veyron. Before I go any further in this video, it's brought to you by TF Safari. They have a wide range of third party KO and official stuff on their site, and they're having another sale right now, so if you want some stuff there, just in time for the holidays, there's a sale happening. If you want to get something for that Transformers fan in your life that likes third party stuff or want something cool for yourself for Christmas or for whatever other holiday you might be celebrating at this time of year, there are plenty to choose from and shipping will mean that it should get to you before the end of December. They also have like a bunch of the new stuff that's come out recently like this Toy Colors Magic Square Prime, which I highly recommend you get because the toy is already pretty decent and oh, that toy deco, deco, that's a word. That toy deco, there we go, uh, makes me kind of want to get rid of mine and get this one because it looks nice. Also this dude, both versions are there and they're pretty all right prices. So I'll link all three of the toys I've mentioned below. And if you use code that toy guy special 3% off, yes, I still know you save a couple dollars off, which is nice. It's always nice. So thank you very much for sponsoring today's video. Now back to the actual toy. So first we're gonna start in car mode because A, that's how it comes packaged, and B, that's the most natural starting point to end up with the thing called a chopper mode. So it's a Veyron, the previous fastest road car. It's raced against a light aircraft from Italy to London. It's raced against a fighter jet, against a McLaren F1, and loads of other things. But it was like a big, this was like the big talk in the car space for a while. and. Drift decided it'd be a good idea to pick this as an Earth disguise. And yeah, I don't like the car personally. It's too round and weirdly shaped to me, but I believe that has to do with its aerodynamics. This toy though captures the look of the car quite well. Some may say it looks a bit too stocky, but in real life, that's kind of how it looks. This isn't a big car in real life. It's, it's kind of small. Then again, I'm also six foot three, so a lot of cars look small to me. This glossy black they used, I'm not the biggest fan of. It's a tad bit fingerprinty, but the red is very nice. It's subtle, but it works. It helps it pop more. Part of his torso is just kind of hanging out the front there, but it's not terrible. It doesn't help the car roll though, so that's not great. And the weapon storage, I just forget about it. It's one of those flip inside out transformations. So there's hardly any robot visible, which is nice. Also the mirrors do come packed separately. I said this thing was surprisingly simple in the title. So let me show you what I mean. So you would think as an MPM that the transformation would be ridiculous, but it's actually not. Also, I forgot to mention, this does actually have a DRS wing. You just need to get a, a, a thing in here and just sort of pop. Getting the wing out is very difficult. There we go. But there is a DRS wing you can raise up and lower if you want to. So if you want the car going at its top speed, you can bring that up so that it handles better or whatever, I don't know. Oh. Bit of plastic excess just fell out from it when I pushed that back in. Oh well. Anyways, let's get him transformed while I talk to you about the experience of doing this for the first time because you'd think, oh, it's gonna be a headache, but it actually wasn't. Where, how do you start this? <laughs> I'm trying to remember how to start it. Right, you do the legs first. So, bring these out like so. But when I got it, I took the instructions, I looked at them and I went, no, these look terrible and I tossed them aside and then I looked up MGO because that's probably the, the best way to do a transformer like this is to just watch the MGO video. And what I realized was I got to a point in the, 
MGO video where that's not supposed to happen. That's never happened before. But I was watching the MGO video and I stopped to catch up to what he was doing. And lo and behold, I just kept going and kept going. And I figured it out myself and did the whole masterpiece movie style transformation without the instructions because that's how easy it was. It's, it's legitimately not that hard to get this whole thing figured out. The only issues that I would say are weird are probably getting the arms into car mode because you have to remember what orientation they go in. And then also just, it has to be done in a very specific order of operations. But once you figure that order of operations out, it's really, really simple. Just getting all this stuff folded out and tabbed in and then bringing this up, making sure this is flipped over this and peg it in, peg it in. This is hard to do in front of a camera like, ah, there we go. And then we'll just take this and rotate that and peg that in. And then you just clip this all together, rotate the foot the correct way, tab the thigh in and that's not in all the way. There we go, leg. So that's not that bad, right? All right, so now that the legs are done, let's move on to the arms. The arms are the ones getting into car mode, like I said, where you have to be very specific in its orientation, otherwise it's not gonna work. But getting it out, you just pull them out. <laughs> you just take them and bring them out of the car and then just sort of shift them around. I did it, we did it. All right, now what? Rear torso section, hold these in. Fold these in, rotate this section at the grill. It goes that way, around, like that. So what you wanna do is you wanna take this section, which you can't see because it's out of focus, bring this up and then bring this entire torso section down like that and then fold this down. Now this right here will clip into a, a thing here, this little, this little nub. You wanna make sure it's all the way down and flat. This part can be a tiny bit tricky to, to figure out when you first get it. So, oops, see, cause it just comes out. But you wanna make sure it's all nice and squeezed in there. And that's the backpack. And we're pretty much done. Just get the hands all situated by opening them and rotating the forearms. This one, you gotta close this section here and then rotate the forearm. And then these collar pieces, I've seen them done a million different ways. I personally just sort of fold them all the way back and in. But like I said, I've seen them done a bajillion different ways. And there you have drift, that's it. That wasn't, I didn't peg that in properly. That wasn't super terrible now, was it? Yeah, that's, that's not painful to do at all. I do recommend watching MGO's JTI instead of the instructions because the instructions are dookie, but it looks odd. So the legs are permanently at an A stance and that doesn't look great. Like most will probably display him in a pose, but if you want to display him standing up straight, it, it requires the legs to be a little closer. It's eh, not happening. That coupled with the unfortunate QC of loose hips doesn't help at all on my copy. That's really my biggest qualm with the robot mode though, how weird his legs are. Cause the upper body is the most poseable thing I've seen in a while. He looks fantastic though. Like for 115 or whatever this thing costs, it's very well done. The paint's on point, it feels durable. The plastic is the closest I've felt to an actual MPM toy. And the joints feel solid other than those hips that are loose, but I'll fix them later. The robot mode does change the chest on the red version to give him the AMG GTR grille devoid of Mercedes logo for obvious legal reasons. And they even made sure to make the back of this toy look as pretty as possible with those like, what are those cylinder heads or cylinder chambers or whatever those are supposed to be and that golden disc on his back. And none of the details feel flat. The samurai armor and the leg details specifically are what pop to me the most. The head sculpt, I've never been a fan of Drift's head sculpt in the film, to be completely honest, but here it captures that on-screen model quite well. So if you like the way his face looks, then you're gonna like that. He comes with two short blade propeller thingies that stick out on his back and his two swords that have tabs specifically made to go in specific hands, but the swords look awesome. Now, the legs are a tad bit on the limited side, as I said. I'll explain that better when I get into the articulation, but 
even with the limitations, you can still get him looking fantastic in some poses. I've been feeling weird, I can't seem to focus good enough. Nothing's really clear, sometimes it could be a little tough. I just need to feel like the end's in sight for me. But let's be really real, anxiety can foggy all this stuff. I've been feeling weird, I can't seem to focus good enough. Nothing's really clear, sometimes it could be a little tough. I just need to feel like the end's in sight for me. But let's be really real. Yeah. So yeah, as you saw, you can get him into poses. It's just awkward to try and get him. I just noticed his shoulders are like that. Uh, it's awkward to get him there, especially in the lower legs. So the upper body is actually quite posable. However, the head is limited because... Ooh, that made a sound. I didn't, oh, I unpegged the torso. That's what happened. That made a sound. I was like, what is that noise? Uh, so the head right here has these two cutouts in it right here to go over these two hinges so that it sits and sits flush. He's doing the splits because his hips are loose. This is this is what I have to do to get him to stand up straight. Oh, that's new. <laughs> so that his head sits like this. However, it then doesn't turn. So you have to shift it forward to get it to turn. And he has a full range of motion, but you have to shift it forward a little bit. So it does look a tad weird from certain angles. It's not horrible, it's just an odd solution to get around that issue. Shoulders can do a full 360, they can go out, and they can go out even further if you want them to. There is bicep rotation. You do have double jointed elbows on both sides. Uh, forearm rotation on both sides, no wrist artic articulation, it's the forearm. Uh, then the hand can go forward and back, the fingers are all linked together, and you have downward motion at the wrist, though this one is a little bit better at going down than this one just due to how the arms are designed, excuse me. Also, is that supposed to be like the interior on his arm? I can never tell. He does have a waist joint. Uh, tilting the weight, the, the torso forward does get him a little bit more of a waist joint. There is an ab crunch, as you saw. This little chest piece likes to come out every now and again on mine. But it's, yeah, he does have an ab crunch. Now the hips, this is where it starts getting weird. So these, the, like they, they don't look like they move. Like these panels go over the waist. So like that's as far forward as they go. That's as far back as they go, and that's as far out as they go. However, these are on springs, so they can move down and you can have the legs go that far forward now, which is better, but I wish it could go out a little bit more. I'm not the biggest fan of this solution. I kind of wish this, you could shift it down, and there was a hinge like right here to fold this forward so that you could get the leg to go completely straight. That would be nice. Uh, there is thigh swivel, though it is blocked when the leg is stocked straight, so you have to get it out to use it. Uh, you do have a double jointed knee, which is quite nice, and then ankle tilts. Oh, and the toes can move forward and back if you want to. So, he is articulated, but yeah, mine has the loose hips. I just haven't fixed them yet. But once I do fix them, he'll be able to stand properly. But yeah, he's he's got a lot of articulation, a lot of joints. It's just awkward you you get the hang of it like i got the hang of it but it does take a it's got a little bit of a learning curve to it so that's the robot the the chopper itself is just folding him in half and making a thing and it looks like this and i'm just gonna get that off the screen don't even bother with it there is a reason this is the first triple changing drift and that's because this happens but this toy as a whole package is surprisingly a lot of fun loose hips aside it looks epic and feels epic makes me very excited for that shatter to come out. But should you get one? Well, if you like NPM style toys like this or just want a good looking drift, then yes, it doesn't command an extremely high price right now. So if you want something like this and you can use my code to get an extra three bucks off, which is always nice, it's affordable-ish enough for this and it's pretty decent. And it's the most fun MPM style toy I think I've messed with right now. I c actually flip it back and forth a lot. It's not difficult to figure out and get into either mode and that really makes me happy. So yes, I do recommend one. But that's my look at Metagate Drift. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.